You can see I'm a Joe Burrow fanatic. I'm one of those like Joe Burrow girlies. So if you go to my TikTok, I actually have made like fan edits of Joe Burrow to like fucking trap music. Like I'm one of those. Like I'm one of those. Um, I can't watch anymore. And I've been a fan of his since he entered the league. So this is his fifth season. Um, I was such a fan. I, I almost went out to Cincinnati. And I, I actually live in New Jersey near Philadelphia to like attend a game in person. Um, I got into football when I met my husband like around a few years after I met him. Like 2009. I didn't like it at all before I met him. I've always been bothered by the violence. But he was such an Eagles fanatic. I got into the Eagles and some of the players, like the personalities. I started like following them on YouTube and Twitter and stuff like that. Me and my husband attended games at Lincoln Financial Field. Um, apart from being a fan, I've also done a lot of research in terms of like the effects of playing tackle football in terms of CTE, in terms of neurological conditions and disorders like Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, ALS and dementia. I've written tens of thousands of words in articles. I've actually had an article published on a player advocacy blog. I've spoken with attorneys that have filed lawsuits against the NCAA, NFL, Pop Warner. Um, I've spoken with individuals that own um, nonprofit advocacy organizations um, for athletes. So um, with all that being said, um, I cannot watch anymore. So I've had this cognitive dissonance. I've been doing research since 2016. I read a book by a former player called Nate Jackson, who was a tight end for the Denver Broncos called Slow Getting Up. And I saw just how deceptive the NFL was in terms of player injuries, that they didn't take concussions seriously, that they would lie to their players like a broken leg and like the player would be told like it was just a sprain and then he played through it and had his career ruined. Um, in terms of the drugs that they administered to the players, like if you look up something, a drug called... Um, adamantine um for concussions like while that's given to even like adolescents and like non-professionals that get concussions the nfl players like i can send you guys this information because i have a lot of like i've done research on it like they're not told what the drug even is this is going back to 2016 i don't doubt that they're still doing it today but they're not told the name. They're not told possible contradictions. They're not told like who shouldn't take the medication, right? So if you have like any kind of liver issues, you shouldn't take it. Um, it's a medication that's actually for Parkinson's disease, yet they're giving it to players for concussions. While I do see that happening also with high school athletes, they're not even telling the players the name of the drug. They're saying, okay, you still have concussion symptoms, report to the team facility and take this drug. I can send you guys the research I have on this. Um, and it's like, that's dangerous because if you're not even asking them, do you have any liver issues, right? Um, the drug is known to like increase liver enzymes, they could die. There are certain medications that you can't take along with this drug. And if you're not checking, what is their medication history, right? Um, you're not supposed to drink alcohol and take this medication. They're not even telling the players what the medication is. So um, I kept seeing this total disregard for the player's health in terms of like longevity. Same with Tordal. Tordal is a drug that is a powerful NSAID that is only given in um, surgical settings prior to a patient receiving surgery outside of the NFL. And it's never supposed to be taken for more than five days. You can look that up yourself. It has a black box warning from the FDA. That is the strongest warning that the FDA issues. And they give it to players so much. A T injection, if you've heard of a T shot, that's Tordal. It's actually caused renal failure, like with Marcellus Wiley, right? It's caused extensive liver damage. It can actually cause death. And they just don't give it down, right? They just keep shooting the players up. It's anything to get them on the field. So I always had this like cognitive dissonance, but then um, I was drawn to like the player personalities and um, just, you know, the physicality of it and like the physical courage and um, things of that nature, right? Um, but it's like, I just can't watch anymore because last night, Sunday Night Football, Bengals Giants, you could look at Joe Burrow um, in the background. You can see that his eyes are glassy. You can see that his eyes are unfocused. It was an extremely hard hit where Joe hit the back of his head against 
the turf. So the Bengals were playing at MetLife Stadium. So a quarter of all concussions in the NFL actually occur from the back of the player's head slamming against the turf, and yet the owners don't give a shit, and they refuse to replace turf with grass. But yet, when one of the owners at their stadiums was asked to do that for the World Cup because they wanted to host the World Cup, they agreed to change the turf out with grass just for the World Cup, then they're actually going to change it back to turf. 36% of all injuries occur um, on turf. It's easier for the player's cleats to get cut, to get caught. So like cutting direction and things that you're going to do as a football player. And a quarter of all concussions occur from the back of a player's head slamming against turf. And the owners still are just cheap as fuck and they don't care about the health of the players. But um, Joe was done um, after the hit, right? They showed it, they replayed it in slow motion. So like you can literally see that his eyes are glassy. It's unfocused. Like he was very clearly concussed. He was then immediately evaluated in the blue medical tent. Tariko and Collinsworth did not even speculate if Joe Burrow was being evaluated for a concussion. But if you compare that to Darius Slayton, who was a wide receiver for the Giants, who the Bengals were playing last night, they immediately, you know, speculated that he was being checked for a head injury, right? But not with Burrow. They just said he's in the blue medical tent. They didn't even speculate a reason why. So then you saw the Bengals backup quarterback, Jake Browning, he was warming up on the sidelines. Joe is getting checked out in the blue medical tent. Then Burrow comes out of the blue medical tent. You see him sit down on the sidelines. You see him take the tablet um, like that has the place on it. He's reading them. Then they just show Burrow going back out there. And then we're never told, like, what was he evaluated for in the blue medical tent, right? After the game, the Bengals won. So Melissa Stark was interviewing Joe Burrow. And she said, hey, we saw you go into the blue medical tent. Is everything okay with your wrist? So Burrow had surgery on his wrist last season that actually ended his season. While he landed on his wrist after the hit, it's very clear. Please pull the hit up. Just watch the slow motion replay. It is very, very clear that he was concussed. You can see that his eyes are glassy. You can see that they are unfocused. You can see that his head doesn't just slam against the turf, by the way. The back of his head literally bounces against the turf. Turf is fucking hard. That's why a quarter of all concussions in the NFL occur from the back of players' heads slamming against the turf. It's not like grass, okay? So he was very clearly concussed. But Melissa Stark asks Joe after the game about his wrist, and she doesn't ask him if he was evaluated for a concussion. So Joe just says, all good, all good, everything is fine. Now, after the game in the post-game presser, one of the Bengals journalists specifically did ask him like, hey, we saw you, you know, get hit and like the back of your head was slammed against the turf. You went into the blue medical tent. I know you came back into the game, but you know, were you checked? And he said, this was Joe's response. Yeah, it was news to me. He said, I felt fine. I just had the wind knocked out of me a little bit, but I was told I had to go into the blue medical tent to be checked for a concussion. But he was like, that was news to me because I felt fine. He's not fine. Look at that picture. I remember um, 2022 season, Joe Burrow was on Colin Cowherd's podcast, and he said that there's entire games that he played through in LSU that he has no memory of playing in. He was asked by Colin Cowherd, have you ever had lasting effects from being hit? And Joe's never been diagnosed with a concussion. Please pull up the hits that he took in high school, then pull up the hits he took at LSU. He's been one of the most sacked quarterbacks of all time. Like with Staubach, how far back are we going for that, right? The Super Bowl he played on. The amounts of hits he's taken. He's taken a, almost as many hits as Andrew Luck, but he's only been playing for half the amount of time. You really think he's never been concussed? It's exactly like Brady. Brady was never concussed in over 20 fucking years. The concussion protocol, the NFL just doesn't give a fuck, and neither do the players. And he told Cowherd, like, there's games, there's entire games I don't remember to this day. How is that not a lasting effect from a concussion? But yet he was like, yeah, I've played through them, but I've never been diagnosed with one. I'm not going to be able to watch anymore. As big of a fan as I am of his, I cannot watch him do this to himself. These players do this to themselves. The NFL not taking the concussion protocol seriously. And the fact that 10 to 15 years after they stop playing, the NFL is predicting that over a third of them will have neurological conditions and disorders like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, ALS, and dementia. I just cannot watch anymore.